Welcome to Tobacco University. Here we're going to be investigating animal hair comparisons. And while we can see some obvious differences here at the macroscopic level, we're going to be looking more at the microscopic comparisons of different animal hairs from different animals as well as with on the same animal. So first off, animal hairs in general uh, do not possess an possess enough individual microscopic characteristics to exclude other similar animals and can be associated with a unique individual. So we're just kind of looking at just generally classifying them. Uh, if the question here exhibits the same uh, microscopic characteristics as a known hairs, it's concluded that the hair is consistent originating from that particular animal. And we could see here we're maybe comparing different pelts of different animal hairs. So when we're looking at the images, and I'm going to include hopefully quite a few of them uh, so you can be able to kind of get that nice little comparison between them. We want to be thinking about the diameter, uh, the medulla, the scales, and the general patterns of those hairs. So again, what's the, what's the diameter? Uh, what's the medulla? What's the repeating kind of shape of the perimeter? What's the width and the length? Again, measured in microns here if provided a scale. And here we're seeing just kind of that example of how we might want to break down one of these microscopic uh, images going forward. So just a general comparison, you know, just looking at kind of the obvious classification, we can see some very stark differences here, looking at scale cast, looking at that kind of cuticle region of how some are kind of like all interlocked with one another, how have these definite kind of like uh, scales of a fish interlocked uh, together. Uh, the river otter here having a little bit more of that irregular pattern. Um, so again, just having no background, just kind of looking at these four images, we can clearly see some differences. Continuing on uh, to looking at comparing fibers within one family, these are all classified uh, under the rodent family, uh, and still we can see that there are some differences um, here as well. Again, maybe not as starkly different as the last image, but definitely uh, when matching uh, an unknown sample up to some knowns, we could definitely see where we could at least eliminate some potential options. So just taking one example here, looking at the links uh, for example here. When we're looking at kind of the um, diameter and the medulla, as I said, here we have the little bar here uh, representing uh, 20 micrometers here. Here we're seeing um, this would be the diameter of 40 microns and a medulla of 35. Keep in mind that the guard cell from lynx number one is just what's shown here. Um, the cells medulla are long, flat in shape that span the width of the medulla. Some of the cells are slightly cupped with many bubble-like features between the cells. This is continuous repeating S-shaped running between the cells throughout the medulla. Now, the images down here, all the images on this slide are all from the lynx. Keep in mind we have the guard scale cast here, so we're taking a casting of the actual kind of cuticle region. We have the guard hair pictured here. We have the under fur, uh, and then we have a different area here of the under fur, and, it, uh, and we can see that there are some differences. So keep in mind that we're here, we're looking at a general comparison between the two, um, so it's important to keep that in mind when we're trying to make some sort of matches or classifications of hair that might be found. Continuing on here for the red fox, and we kind of see that similar image, look at the diameter, look at the medulla here. Um, cross red fox guard here in polarized light, so how we look at it can also impact the image uh, that we may see. Uh, here we're seeing the cells of medulla appear as wide, flat, and shaped with no uh, regular boundaries. In some places, the cells appearing angular. And this is the guard cell at 400 uh, times magnification. And here's the guard scale with the scale cast. So again, that's where we're kind of taking that cuticle uh, region and getting a cast, kind of an impression, if you will, of that cuticle region. This is the midsection of the guard here. Keep in mind where you're taking that, uh, the lower section, the mid or the outer, um, or the kind of more towards the tip region, that can impact uh, potentially what you're going to see in an image. So important to document that when you're taking pictures. Then we have the, uh, here we have the short-tailed weasel, and we're seeing the guard um, here where, where the medulla shows a transition where fibers um, widen. There's a deep wavy S curves here to the medulla. The location where the medulla transition has a wider section um, of hair. We do see that differentiation occurring here in this um, guard cell. Keep in mind this is at 200 magnification. And this is the short-tailed weasel, the under fur region, where we're also noticing some very different medulla um, present here. So again, just that source of comparison. Looking at a woodchuck, 
So here's one kind of nibbling on some plant material there. Uh, looking at the under fur, we're seeing a compilation of kind of um, hairs here, and we do see kind of quite the difference. Here we have unicereal lateral medulla, we have a more complicated medulla, and here we actually have no medulla due to the intense uh, pigmentation now uh, present. So again, keeping in mind uh, where you're sampling that hair um, or where that hair is being identified might require you to look at different regions of the individual, but will help you potentially identify where that hair sample may have come from. Look at the scales near the base here. Look at the wide uh, shape between the scale margins. This fairly smooth scale margins here. Um, all of these with a trained eye can allow you to kind of get into some more of the details of comparison. We also have typically the diameter um, of the hair to the medulla can help us define that medullary index. Uh, likewise, we also have the beaver here. So again, a brown hair, that's great, but we can see some differences between the beaver and the woodchuck. So while initially they look like brown hair and even very similar um, organisms on a quick look, looking at the hairs, we do see some differences and it's important to be looking at those details so you're able to kind of classify, well, is that hair from a beaver or hair from a woodchuck in the example provided here. Then we have the Arctic uh, ground squirrel, and again, that kind of diameter to medulla is a very common um, characteristic here that we're used for comparison. Also looking at the scale cast, again, uh, for that source of comparison and classification. Now keep in mind, uh, this is only a small sample, but if this is something that interests you, you want to look at it into some more detail, uh, the Alaska Fur ID project at um, alaskafurid.wordpress.com is where a lot of these um, information was gathered. Um, is a great resource, has a lot of different animal hairs for comparison, and it's of interest of you, I highly recommend you go about checking uh, this resource out.